My name is Barbara Moon Batista. The name of the studio is Batista Moon Studio. I live in Monterey, California. When I was a teenager, we lived next door to Cole Weston. His father was Edward Weston. Babysat his children and just about any other children that were dropped off in the area. And I got interested in photography at that point. When we moved back into town, I moved across the street from Al Weber. I was 15 and he needed a babysitter and I needed a job. So for an extra 50 cents, Mr. Weber would let me clean out his dark room. He would let me clean out his dark room or clean the trays. <laughs> so you'd slosh out the trays, rinse them out and put them away. Yeah. Or whatever else he needed done, which wasn't much. But I got really enamored with photography and that's pretty much how I got interested in it. And my father had given me a a Girl Scout camera when I was about eight. So I dug that out, started, um, I don't know, playing around with that, putting, putting film in it, processing it, and I graduated from high school pretty young, so I couldn't go anywhere. I went over to the local junior college where Al Weber was teaching a class, and I finished my senior year there, taking photography and art history and anything else they'd let me into. And that's how I got started. And I went on and got a degree in photography and worked for different people. And you happen to live in the hotbed of photography of the mm -hmm. world, I yes. think. Yes, yes. Among your neighbors or, or people in the community, you said Cole Weston, uh, yes. Edward, Edward Weston. Edward. Well, I never really actually met Edward. I think he had passed away or about, was about to by then, but I, I saw his work at Cole's house. And also and, living in the neighborhood was Ansel Adams. Yes. Did you ever meet him? Yeah, some, several times. Yeah. yeah, I did. I met Ansel, uh, let's see, at a couple of uh, photography exhibitions that the Friends of Photography used to be in Carmel. So I would go over there and look at the exhibits and the openings and met him there. And some of my mentors knew him, so he would be there. And when I was about in my late 20s, there was an exhibition at the local fair, which I had put prints in. And I won quite a few first and second place placements. And Ansel came to see the show. He asked me to give him a call. He said he was a, I was a fine printer, and uh, I was too shy. I never did. Just couldn't do it. <laughs> I, well, you know, looking back on it, I missed an opportunity, but you know, it didn't stop me, so. You went on in spite of an invitation. Went on in spite of the invitation, yes. I think I was a little, a little overwhelmed by the thought, so. But I've worked, you know, I've worked steadily since then. Commercial work is very demanding, and so I've always needed a break from fulfilling the needs of others, if that makes any sense. And I was without a dark room for a couple of years. And I started searching for things I could do that didn't require a dark room. I could do them with just water and some other things. And saw a demonstration one day in San Francisco of emulsion and image. Well, actually, it was first it was image transfer, which is done with Polaroid. And I was really taken with it. So I started doing it, putting it on everything I'd get my hands on. And uh, that's how it developed. It was just a passion. Before I knew it, I had. We were teaching workshops in it. Image transfer is you capture the image on Polaroid and then through a series of water baths you soak some soak archival paper in the in a water bath with a little bit of vinegar. When you peel apart the Polaroid in the, initially, instead of developing it for its full 90 seconds, just as you pull the Polaroid it, through its rollers on whatever size it is, the chemistry is active. And so instead of using the paper that's inside of the, po the pocket, you take it and, trans and lay it down onto the, a receiver paper, which at that point is, is what archival watercolor paper that has been moistened. And you use a squeegee or a, an instrument to adhere it down evenly. And then you wait minute or two, sometimes longer, 
and the image is actually transferred from the paper, you know, develops onto the receiver paper, which is the watercolor paper. And you're left with, after you peel it off and dispose of the paper negative, you're left with a very soft, lovely, watercolor-like image that you've taken. You have to work with it for a while to see, you know, what scenes will and subject matters do best on that kind of work and whether or not uh, you know, control the contrast range with your time exposures and your processing exposures. It's just like being in the dark room. Which kind of images do work best with, with image transfer? Usually pretty flat subjects, uh, real contrasty subjects, unless it's, uh, you can really control the, the, the shadow detail. Don't do as well as flat subjects, like with platinum printing, you, the scale is real, real flat. And so anything that's soft and flat does well. Like, for example, tabletop does well because you can control your strobe and make an even exposure of foggy days or se semi, semi sunny days or a shadow, things, shadow detail. Now, there's something called the day lab, which uh, you can put a 35 millimeter slide into and there's a Polaroid adapter at the bottom of it and it's, it's a large cone and you can use 4 by 5 or 8 by 10 Polaroid and it actually, there's a light that projects it with an exposure time onto the Polaroid material and then you pr transfer it to the paper or the glass whatever you're using as a receiver from that point and you have to carefully choose slides because ones with high, a high contrast range don't do as well as ones that have a softer look to them. So you begin with a soft, dreamy atmosphere or image, and you end up with one of the same Right, features. or medium tones. Now, you, it doesn't mean you can't do contrasty subjects. You just have to work harder with the, pol the image transfer to get, your, to get it to work and to look good, not muddy and... Uh, you know, lots of dark black areas and just one little speck of color. How long have you been doing this? Fifteen years. You must have a good number of the images then. Yes, boxes. And a lot of, you know, it, again, it's not an exact science because Polaroid is, is, is a difficult, even in, tra in traditional photography, when you use it to proof your, your work, it's, it's a difficult medium and photographers love cussing out Polaroid because it's, it's a very inconsistent material. So when you apply it to an art form, it's even more frustrating because you're using it for something that it wasn't built for.